everybody. Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. Today, we're going to talk about all things astrology for 2020. And to guide us through the new moons and the Mercury retrogrades is international astrologist Susan Miller. Put your hands together. I'm so excited. Susan Miller. I'm so excited for you to be here because, you know, you, you came to our Build Brunch show last year. You read my chart. I felt inspired. I took on the year full and like excited and so I'm ready for you to like break some stuff down for people in 2020. Oh it's a big year. Yeah but first I want to start with sort of your background uh, just for maybe people who aren't familiar so how did you get into astrology? I was born with a terrible birth defect mm -hmm. and the doctors didn't believe me because they just couldn't find it in all the tests. They said I was making it up. I finally was operated on when I was 14. I was in the hospital a year and in physical therapy for two and a half years. I couldn't go to high school. I went to homeschool. The Board of Ed works with kids like that. And I just wanted to know if I'd ever walk again and look like you, you know? Like no crutches, no brace, just look like everybody else. And uh, my mom was an astrologer. She had taken, before I was born, an eight-year correspondence class with her sister with a, co a company in California. And she was really a scholar. She never did consultations because it wasn't accepted like it is today. And she said, Susie, when you're 14, it will go away. But she was my mother. She didn't want to think I'd go through an ordeal. It was a big ordeal. After high school, I went to college. I went to NYU. And actually, I did really well. I graduated with honors. But uh, it, I just wanted to know. and. And then Time Warner offered me a place on their website. It was called Pathfinder before AOL. And uh, I was there for three years. I said, we must do something long. Astrology Zone should be big. And they were like, wow, we like your enthusiasm. But Web Wisdom says short. And I said, no, no, people need information. Well, they say, how much are you going to write? 17,000 words, but now I'm writing 35 to 40,000 words f divided by 12 signs. They said, won't you get tired? No, never. And, and they said, well, people just come once and leave. I said, no, they check the dates. And the average person comes in three times a month. So my instinct was right. And it's the love of my life 24 years ago. I was going to say, next year is going to be 25 and years. And when AOL, when I first got AOL, everything was black and white. <laughs> And then one day, it was color. It's like the day you first saw a music video, and you're like, okay, this changes yeah. everything. <laughs> you know. And it, it was really exciting to be part of that beginning of the internet. I love how that person didn't understand the power of astrology, thinking people would just like read about their sign once and dip out. It's like, yeah. no, people are so loyal. And I have so many friends who are loyal to Astrology Zone. <laughs> and they love how um, they can tell how much love and effort you put into each month and it takes you a long time to write these very well I can only write two signs a day because yeah. each one takes seven hours yeah. but I, my whole mo is to relieve suffering but also to tell people well you may be thinking about this but there's all this good stuff over here and it's my job to let you know that yeah. this is glittering for you take a look at that yeah. you know so and you do this calendar every year which is great I had it up in my kitchen it sort of breaks down when the new moons are and like kind of special days throughout the year it's so beautiful I have Isaac Zanu doing all the artwork and now Bloomingdale's is selling it for me and uh, I'm really excited they gave me a boutique with all kinds of clothes and things that I divided into the different signs and it, it's it's just been an exciting time I am the publisher of this and uh, so we can't really go on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. So I'm, I'm, I'm working with little bookstores, which is actually really nice. And you have like a magazine book counterpart that will come out next month, right? It's actually a book book this book year. Book. You know, I'm queen of long. And I said, I could tell Aries more. I could tell Gemini more. I'm going back in and adding a little bit more. And it'll come out in February. It's called The Year Ahead 2020. And it's... It's going to be a map for you. You'll, you'll get to see. I'll even give you a look ahead of what's coming in 2021. Mm -hmm. So you get an idea of how to plan. Yes. So let's talk about each sign because I know um, we have every different sign represented and everybody wants just a little tease of what they can expect for themselves in 2020. So you start with Aries, right? Aries. Okay. And everything I'm going to tell you. You have to take to heart, this is a big trend. Listen, All guys. of them. And if you have Aries rising, listen to. Aries, this is the biggest career year of your life. You can become very influential in your career. 
go for the gold. There is no stopping how high you can rise. Taurus, you have a very interesting one. The ninth house rules information you take in and give back out to society. So it rules higher education, college and graduate school. Great time to go back and even ask for a scholarship. Uh, it's a great time to take long distance trips. You're probably going to take one that you're going to go somewhere you've never been before. And it's really exciting, what Oprah would call awe-inspiring. <laughs> and it's also the, uh, the house of publishing and broadcasting. And if you've always wanted to do a podcast or do a, an article for a magazine every month or write a book or a screenplay, get serious about it. Now, Can I be an Aries? That sounded <laughs> awesome. Oh, that one was Taurus. Oh, that yeah, was Taurus. Sorry. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Gemini, chunks of money are falling from heaven for you. Chunks. They're not coming regularly every week, but just imagine these bundles of money falling out of the sky. It could be a commission, royalty, bonus. It could be an inheritance, a prize winning. Don't bet too much. I don't know which way it's going to come, so I don't want you to lose money. I want you to make money. But you are a money magnet this year. So take it seriously. It's reward for everything you've been doing for a while. Cancer. You're the sign most likely to get married. If you say, wait a minute, I'm already married. <laughs> well, your husband or wife does very, very well. And you benefit as a result. And you too will be traveling together. Not for work. It'd be fun. But if you say, wait, I'm not interested in married. I don't even have a partner right now. You can use this for agent, manager, you know, any kind of one-on-one -on -one collaboration. It's so good. That's how I found my agent. She came to me and said, you need some help. I'm going to start working. <laughs> and she's the best thing that ever happened to me. Leo, you're going to work very hard this year. You've got a lot of assignments. But they're the kind of assignments that everybody in the department says, hey, wait a minute. Why does she get all the best ones? <laughs> you're being given a chance to show your, your metal, how well you deal with complex projects. And more projects will come to you in four years. It's going to add up all those years to something so big that I want you to give your all. Also, it's a great year for health and fitness. And you could lose the last five pounds, which is the hardest always. <laughs> oh, Virgo, you hit the jackpot. And I'm so happy to tell you this, because they always think about everybody else. You have the best love aspects of the entire zodiac. Well, actually, Capricorn has some good ones, too. Those two. Now, if you say, well, it'll take a total eclipse of the sun to meet anybody. Actually, we are going to have that. So, <laughs> well, you're going to have everything you need. But you have to push away from the computer if you stay late at the office every night. You won't meet anybody. Nothing will happen. Or if you lock yourself in your house, and this is a modest sign, but go out, join a club, or join a charity, and work side by side someone who believes that in the charity too. Or even give volunteer work to a political organization. Maybe there's a candidate you like and you want to you know, maybe work on Saturdays. There's nobody who will ever say we don't need more help. So you should have that. Also, your creativity will blossom. My number one question on Astrology Zone is, can I have a baby? Mm. Uh, women have gotten good jobs, but not stopped to have children. Virgo, if you want a child, this is your year. This what? is the year, OK? She's like, I don't. I don't want one. <laughs> well, you're going to get one. Having, <laughs> I had two children is the best thing I ever did. I. Love having children. Oh, it was the best. <laughs> now, Libra, real estate, real estate, real estate. Do not settle for anything less than your dream situation. It will be spacious. It will be sunny. It will have large closets. My own daughter said, Mommy, I don't think astrology works in Manhattan. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Just keep looking because this is a once in 12 year aspect. Now, if you love your home, you might want to fix it up, put in a new kitchen or buy a new couch, something, even on a small level. I remember years ago, we didn't have any money. I had the children in private school and I wanted a glass desk. And in the laundry room, there was the sign, glass table, but it was really a large desk, it had thick glass. Oh my gosh, it was only $600, I still have it. 
you're going to get lucky. You're going to get lucky. Um, Scorpio, you have a really interesting one. Everything's about communication. If you have a book in you, a screenplay, a podcast, something where you communicate your thoughts, people want to hear them. Take yourself seriously. Okay, I write for nine international magazines. And Vogue Japan came to me when I had your aspect. And in the very beginning, I majored in business. I was afraid of editors. I took a weekend workshop, how to approach editors. <laughs> and now I write for nine magazines overseas. So go for the gold if you've always wanted to write. Start now, OK? You can sell a book with just a few chapters and a treatment. Don't think you have to finish the whole thing, OK? And then the, the advance will help you keep going. Now, Sag, you had your emerald year last year. And everything was coming up in your garden. You were getting lucky breaks. You were happy. You may have even met someone. But there was one thing you weren't happy about, money. You felt, now other people looking at you could say, well, you make, you make pretty good money. Well, not considering how much I'm putting out, it should have gone up. Mm -hmm. This year, the universe makes a correction and you get the money you want. And unlike Gemini, where it's coming sporadically in chunks, yours is coming regularly. If you're self-employed, you get regular clients who love you, adore you, support you. But you can bring in new business. It's all good. So I should date a Sagittarius this year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they'll take you to a nice restaurant. I like yes. nice things, Susan. Uh, <laughs> Capricorn, you're the celestial favorite. All the planets right now are in Capricorn. And you really should voice your ideas. Take yourself seriously. It's really hard when you're young to take yourself seriously. Sometimes you need someone around you to say, you're really talented. You know, and that happened to me. I, you know, I, I didn't know what I could do. But just go out there and do it. Follow your passion, because that's really what's going to make you successful. You and Virgo both have the best romantic aspects. You and Virgo. So I want you circulating. And, uh, you know, and if you're married, you can have a baby this year because Jupiter loves to bring babies. So <laughs> I thought you were going to say if you're married, you can still circulate. I was like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Princess Kate's a, a Capricorn. I wonder if she'll go for a fourth baby. I don't know. That would be nice. I think, they're they're also I think the monarchy needs that right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Aquarius, as I said, is waiting for next year. They are having a quieter year. It's a good year to uh, decide what goes, what stays, what you like, what you don't like. And I know this sounds easy. Ask yourself, what's really important to me? Sometimes it's not so easy to answer. But think about it. It's a good time to get a mentor or a therapist if you've had something troubling you, because you want to start the new year, 2021, completely ready. And you have your basket, and you're going to delete certain things so that Jupiter, who has so many goodies for you, who comes every 12 years, he's like Santa Claus. He's great. He wants to put things in your basket. So it's going to be a delirious year. And Actually, for love, well, you're going to travel a lot in the second half of the year because Mars is staying in, in Aries forever. So you're gonna, maybe a house in the Hamptons okay. or Jersey Shore right. or, you know, one of those weekends. Oh, perfect. Just yes. <laughs> I'm throwing it out to the universe. If you say I'm going to be traveling, let's go to yeah. Jamaica. And they're not far. Yeah. You know, they're not like London or something. Yeah. They're quick but fun, you know, so you'll have a good time. And then the last sign is Pisces. And Pisces has some real social aspects, making lots of new friends. People are pouring into their life. And many of them will stay and become good friends. And among them may be a romantic partner. Yeah, so, so that's good, too. And I always say I'm a cusp person, oh, yeah. so I'm a, a Aquarius Pisces cusp. You're so lucky. What day exactly? February 18th. 18th, the last yeah. Day. The 19th is. Well, you know, a lot of people don't know. They say to me, they write to us, why does some magazine say this date or that date? The sun doesn't move into the next sign at the stroke of midnight. Mm -hmm. Every year it's slightly different depending on its, its orbit and its wobble. For example, President Trump's son, Barron, uh, was born on the first day of spring. Mm -hmm. So we all thought, oh, he'll be an entrepreneur. 
But then I looked at the chart. The sun didn't move into Aries until 3 o'clock that day. And so he'll give away the money very uh, nicely to charities, but he also has Jupiter in the eighth house, so he'll, it'll multiply while he sleeps, you know. <laughs> he'll have plenty, you know, but he'll be very sensitive to philanthropic uh, causes, and it, it'll be very nice. So, but so you see, it moves into the next sign at different times. But cuss babies are so lucky. They're lucky because you have all the intellect of Aquarius and the interest in science and math and all those things, and all the right brain artistic part mm -hmm. of Pisces. You have both. If you're born on the cusp, you partake of both, because there's a blending. I, I always think of charcoal drawings, you know, uh, pastels or watercolors. There is a blending of the So you two. should always read both if you're in that cusp window? No, well, you should find out which you are. If you're a cusp baby, you, you must do a chart because you have a ruling planet. Your ruling planet is the genius planet Uranus. And for Pisces, it's Neptune. But if I were doing your chart, I'd have to look at the conversations Uranus was having with the other little planets. I always think it's like a little cocktail party and they're talking to each other, but two over there are fighting and those two are kissing and, and Mercury's trying to jump out the window and I'm like trying to keep these all together. But yeah, I have to look at your ruling planet because that's very important. He's kind of the engine that runs your chart. I know the cusp people yeah. are always sort of feeling like, I don't know where I Nobody's stand. Nobody's baby. And so charts are sort of the way to go if people want well, a little more. Well, you should more. have your chart yeah. done. And in order to do your chart, you need your day, month, year, but time, exact time of birth and the city. And hospitals make mistakes. So if your chart seems a little weird, you have to go to an astrologer to get it rectified. That's deep. Yeah. I thought about the getting my <laughs> birth time wrong. That's messed up. We do have some audience questions. Uh, the first oh, one sure. is coming from Twitter. I think it's going to pop up here. Oh, Twitter. I love Twitter. I'm at Astrologies. I go to Twitter more than any other. I love Twitter. So uh, E.H. Kalon asks, Build Series. Hi, Susan. I am a Cancerian. January seems to be a total downer. One huge deal that I'm working on for many months seems stuck. Is February going to be better? By the way, they're in sales. You know, cancer has not had a lot of help from the universe. Imagine I'm the cancer and there are five planets opposed to me. That means this person isn't getting a lot of cooperation. And his client, who's, who's trying to do the deal with, maybe hasn't set the budget yet. The problem is from February 16th to March 9th, we have Mercury retrograde. Now, that could help if you had a proposal that they just didn't know what to do and they put it on the shelf. You could dust it off and say, let's talk about that one because you already initiated it and you're going back to it. Anything with the word re, readdress, re-examine, anything with re, you go back to. So sometimes Mercury retrograde can be good. Detectives love it. Cold cases get all kinds of clues, you know. But um, all right, let me say one more thing to the cancer. When the sun has looped as far away as it can in January, because that person's born in July, it's their winter. See, for cancer, their winter is July, just the opposite. But as it loops back, they're getting more and more help from the little planets who are putting their little arms around them and giving them little kisses and saying, I'm going to help you. So don't give up on that. Asian. There could be... Some reasons, keep having lunch with the client, keep in touch. Don't totally drop out of, you know, of sight because people like people who are persistent, mm -hmm. especially busy people who just can't deal with things at yeah. the time you get. I, I had to learn that the universe doesn't run on my timetable. <laughs> me too, Susan. We're all living in our body and like, why aren't they calling me back? Well, it may not be the number one thing on their list. So just... Just be cool about it and keep seeding the market with other people. But cancer's good with money. A lot of the Rockefellers were cancers. They're smart money signs. So is uh, Taurus, Scorpio, and Capricorn. Those are the best money managers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who's got our first question in the audience right here? Hello, Susan. Hi. Hi. Um, what do you think of um, um, our um, millennials and really following the astrological signs? Oh, well, I love the millennials. Bless their hearts. And by the way, I have 40% men reading me. Uh, 
many of the millennials got out of college in 2008, 2009, 10, when we were having the worst recession. I call it a depression. I mean, I know the pundits don't. But and, and men would say to me, look, there's a rock in the middle of the road. Should I build a bridge over it? Should I blow it up? Should I take a lever? Should I build a road in the other direction? Give me options. I love that about men. Men are very practical, and I am too. And that's where I got my men. Um, the mainly 40, 35, well, I would say 25 to 40. Above 40 to 45 is the gray area, and above 45, they've been socialized out of astrology by their families. No, millennials are open. I think our society so heavily stresses science that it, there needs to be a balance, and I think millennials sense it. They want meaning. They like the mystery of astrology and the unlocking of the clues, and I love them. I, I try to hang out with millennials <laughs> as much as possible. So, um, yeah, uh, and s listen, I think astrology has always been interesting to people. They just never talked about it. We have social media now, and... You know, I'm on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook at Astrology Zone, and I I, I love to go down to the town square <laughs> and see what people are talking about as I'm writing. I'm like, oh, what are they talking about? You know, and I take a look. You know, it, it's fun. Yeah, it's not only fun. You know, we had Gutenberg Bible, we could read. Then we had radio, we could hear. Uh, we could hear with radio. Then TV, see, read, and hear. But now it closes the box. We can respond. It's a huge leap for civilization, and maybe we didn't think of it that way, but I can get the feedback from the readers, and I love that. I love that, yeah. Astrology but really connects people. Thank you people. for being interested in astrology. <laughs> astrology really connects people. I love that that message. And, and your question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's Hi. coming to the Chinese New Year. You're the rat, so I was curious if you had any thoughts well, about Well, you know, that I was in just in Beijing on a press tour, and they spoke of the little rat so kindly. So I said, wait a minute, I'm getting a feeling about this. Do you think of the little rat like Mickey Mouse, like we do? And I said, oh yes, exactly like Mickey Mouse. And he's happy, he's prosperous. We love the little rat. I thought, oh boy, New Yorkers are going to have a hard time dealing with this, but yeah, we've <laughs> we have got to get over rat. the transom. <laughs> <laughs> pizza rat was cute. And uh, you know, Bloomingdale said to me, if you had to do a display, what would you do? And I said, a wishing tree. Because they have the, like, imagine white branches with the authentic red envelopes. And what people do is put in a wish in the envelope and then tie it with a little red ribbon on the white branches. And you have a wishing tree. And, but you have to have an authentic envelope. So all of us are lucky. We live in New York. We can go to Chinatown. But many cities have Chinatown. And you should definitely go and go to the celebration. It's the 25th. And it's always the new moon in Aquarius every year. And, uh, you know, and, and celebrate and try some new Chinese food. I had Peking duck. Oh, my gosh. It was the best. So, so we're running out of time. But really oh. quickly, I want you to forecast something for the world, globally, in the United States, just something that will maybe all of us will feel and see together this year. We have three planets traveling together, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. Now, if you, Jupiter and Pluto only get together every 13 years. And so they're happy to see each other. They're going to go have dinner. And they're going to plan the whole year for us. Did you ever have a little brother, a little sister? I'm coming too. No, no, you're staying home. Mommy said I could come. So you're like, okay. So now when you look at the chart from mid or late March all the way to mid-December, these three planets are almost like packing tape, like as if you were FedExing something out. And they're shoulder to shoulder all the way through the year. Now Jupiter expands everything it touches, and Pluto takes the goodness of Jupiter and expands it even more. That's why I feel we're going to have a great economy. Don't believe the pundits when they say we're going into a recession because Germany and, and Japan are slowing down. No, no, no. We're going to do well. But then I had to think, what about Saturn? He, it, he constricts everything he touches. He shrinks everything he touches. I had to think about this a long time. I think his... His role is a good one because Jupiter and Pluto are like a hot air balloon taking the economy all the way to the moon. But Saturn will anchor it, make it practical, 
and hold down inflation. Because if all our incomes go up, but all the prices go up, we're back to square one. Saturn will hold down inflation. So I'm looking at a great year, 2020. This is amazing. Can you just let Congress <laughs> know? <laughs> Can I what? Can you just let Congress know? Just like give, oh, yes. you I know, mean, just a little heads up, like and, guys, we're okay. And the, and the financial stations, which I watch sometimes. <laughs> Stop being let so them negative. Know. You know, uh, it's a good well, thing. Susan, I am such a big fan of yours. I could honestly talk to you for another hour. <laughs> um, but I'm glad that we were going to have the calendar. Where can people get your calendar? Online. Um, uh, and uh, yes, and we send it right out, right away. I have a fulfillment house. So I don't do it on the get floor. Get the calendar. Obviously. And then also, I look forward to every month going to Astrology Zone and checking out what's going on for Aquarius. So, And I also have an app, yes. uh, Daily Horoscope Astrology Zone. A lot of people are pretending to be me, but I'm on Apple and Google. Look for the AZ in white letters against Navy Sky. Well, there's only one Susan Miller. So thank you for joining us. Put your hands together for Susan, guys. <laughs> thank you.